Good afternoon. Thanks to everyone for being here. I'm pleased to be here today to uh, talk about the uh, announcement that Trans Mountain Corporation put out today. As you've seen, they've uh, given us some updated information on the Trans Mountain project expansion. We're pleased with that information. The project, the expansion project, is uh, quite different than it was a few years ago. It has much uh, more rigorous uh, environmental and um, other safety issues that have been built into the project. It has a much more robust uh, engineering plan. And of course, it has a uh, significantly greater amount of indigenous participation. So the project is now poised to enable us to deliver on what we said we wanted to deliver for Canadians, a fair price for our, for our resources, ensuring that we get a fair price in international markets. Uh, it will enable us to move rapidly towards a green transition by taking the uh, revenues from the Trans Mountain Project expansion and putting them into the green transition. Of course, it'll help us to create jobs. We had a positive jobs report today. We had a, a very positive report nationally, but there is a real challenge in Alberta. While we had 34,500 new jobs across Canada, we saw a decline in jobs in Alberta. And this project will help us to deliver jobs for Albertans, for people in Saskatchewan, for people in British Columbia. And of course, it will allow us to deliver on our promise of uh, reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. We're also pleased that uh, a few days ago we had a, a report or a, a decision from the Federal Court of Appeal which said that we went through a robust process of consultation with Indigenous peoples and recognized that uh, therefore this project uh, can go forward. So we are uh, pleased with where we are today and uh, looking forward to being able to deliver for Canadians. Uh, je voudrais dire que uh, aujourd'hui nous avons, nous avons une annonce de Trans Mountain Corporation. C'était important pour nous. Uh, C'est clair que avec uh, avec l'annonce, le, le, uh, on a un projet qui est uh, viable au niveau économique. On va avoir un, un projet d'ici uh, fin 2022. Et uh, bien sûr, c'est un projet qui est très différent qu'il y a quelques ans. C'est un projet avec les sauvegardes euh, environnementales, les sauvegardes au ni niveau sécuritaire. C'est un projet avec un plan robuste au niveau engineering. Et bien sûr, c'est un projet avec plus de participation des peuples autochtones. De cette façon, on peut délivrer les bénéfices pour euh, le Canada, pour les Canadiens et les Canadiennes avec, euh, avec le projet. Le, les bénéfices comme un prix euh, équitable pour nos ressources dans les marchés internationaux les bénéfices comme, euh, comme euh, plus de participation des peuples autochtones et la possibilité d'un euh, environnement plus vert avec, avec les ressources du projet euh, Trans Mountain. Avec la décision de la Cour d'appel il y a quelques jours, nous sommes euh, très heureux qu'on a un, un, un plan pour délivrer le projet. On a eu une, une, une uh, consultation très robuste avec les peuples autochtones Et, euh, et maintenant, euh, on va continuer avec le projet euh, pour, le, pour, le, pour le Canada, pour les Canadiens. Si vous avez des questions. Si vous voulez vous identifier, one question, one follow-up. Raymond Fillion de TVA. Bonjour, M. Morneau. C'est quand même 5 milliards, plus de 5 milliards de plus que prévu pour mener à bien les travaux. Qu'est-ce que vous dites aux contribuables qui risquent de, de se sentir trahis par ça? C'est important pour nous que le projet est, est viable au niveau économique. Uh, on, a, on a fait une due diligence uh, avant qu'on qu a décidé d'avoir le, 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 le projet pour, uh, pour le Canada. Et c'est clair que ça continue d'être un projet très important pour, uh, pour le Canada. Mais en même temps, c'est un projet qui est, qui est au niveau économique qui est, uh, qui est important. Uh, nous savons qu'avec uh, uh, avec le projet, on va avoir uh, la possibilité d'avoir un, un prix uh, qui est... Uh, équitable pour nos réserves et de cette façon c'est important pour, uh, pour le Canada, pour l'Alberta et bien sûr au niveau du travail. Mais qu'en est-il du dépassement de coûts quand même, 5 milliards de plus que prévu et qu'est-ce que ça fait à votre crédibilité, d'autant plus que déjà les déficits sont plus élevés que prévu, certains diront ça va nuire à votre crédibilité. C'est un projet très différent qu'avant. On a une, uh, une sauvegarde environnementale qui est différente. Uh, on a eu, bien sûr, uh, un niveau de, de travail qui est plus important, avec plus de travail dans Alberta et Colombie-Britannique. Et uh, nous savons que 
on, on a maintenant un une temps prévu pour uh, le projet de fin uh, 2022. Minister Brian Mullen, uh, Global News. Does this price jump make it less appealing or economically viable for those groups who are already putting together proposals to buy it, including Indigenous-led groups? I think what's, what's clear from what the company told us today is that the project continues to be a strong project. Uh, we, uh, we went through a due diligence process to uh, consider uh, how this would be commercially viable. This was in the range of, of considerations that we looked at. Of course, the project will deliver one and a half billion dollars of, uh, of available cash flow once it's finished, which means that it, uh, it remains uh, commercially viable and I think uh, very interesting for the eventual commercial buyers that we're going to be seeking because we don't intend on keeping this in uh, government hands. What, what's your timeline for selling it? You've said uh, you'll sell it when it's de-risked, but uh, when do you think that's going to be? Well, at this stage, I think, as you know, we, uh, we want to make sure that the project is able to be delivered. So uh, we are going to continue with our uh, consultations with Indigenous peoples to uh, think about how we can have a portion of the, of the uh, advantage of this project in Indigenous hands. Uh, we need to ensure that the project is, uh, is fully de-risked so that we get the, the appropriate return for Canadians. Uh, so we don't yet have a timeline, but it continues to be our goal to, uh, to put this back into the private sector, and we're looking forward to doing that. Hi, Minister. I wanted to go off topic a bit, if I could. The last time you met with your provincial counterparts, you suggested you'd have a response to them on changes to the fiscal stabilization program by January. It's February, and I don't think we have a formal answer. So why the delay, and, and when can you contemplate delivering on the promise to improve the program? In fact, we didn't uh, say that we would have the changes in January. We told uh, the provincial finance ministers that we would get back to them with a timeline for those changes, which we did. We got back to them uh, a week or so ago and, and told them that we were, we were working on that and expected to have some uh, conclusions by spring uh, 2020. So we're working on that right now. I've been in uh, const uh, constant conversations with my, with my colleagues. I spoke to both the uh, Saskatchewan Minister of Finance and the Alberta Minister of Finance today and we're looking forward to further discussions on that program. You mentioned the job numbers for Alberta, which were poor compared to other parts of the country. You say this will help, but not until 2022. Uh, there's some suggestion that the government is contemplating some sort of aid specifically for Alberta or a transition program for Alberta. Is that something that the cabinet is considering that we could see in the budget or at some other time in the near future? Well, a few things that you said there that, uh, that aren't quite accurate. First of all, this project is delivering jobs right now. There's almost 3,000 people that are working on this project right now on the Trans Mountain expansion, and it will peak at 5,500 uh, people. So, so there are Albertans who are at work today. Uh, yes, there are challenges in Alberta. It's, it's real. The, the, the job growth that we're seeing across the country is positive, but we do need to recognize the challenges in Alberta. The reports today were inaccurate. We are, we are looking at how we can create economic opportunity across the country, but significantly focused on Alberta and Saskatchewan. That work is ongoing. It's one of the reasons that I'm in uh, regular touch with, with people like uh, Travis, uh, who's the uh, Alberta Finance Minister. And uh, when we have more to say, we will, uh, we'll be back to you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Maura Forrest of Politico. Have you spoken with the Indigenous-led groups that are interested in buying the pipeline about this cost increase, and, and what have they said about it? Uh, I've not had uh, any discussions with, with any of those groups uh, recently. Uh, today, obviously, we had this news from, from Trans Mountain. Uh, we see it as providing some sense of, of project certainty built off the Federal Court of Appeal decision, and I'm confident that there will continue to be significant interest in this project from both uh, Indigenous-led groups and from other groups that are interested in a, in, a, in a project that's going to deliver not only a fair price for Canadians, but a, an economically good result. And uh, do you anticipate that there could be further cost increases beyond this or further delays past 2022? I think what we heard today from the company, and remembering that it's, it's run independently, is a high level of confidence that the, the numbers that they put out, together with the, uh, the range that we've put on, on that, uh, are what they expect. And the timing, of course, uh, they've said that we should expect something around late 2022. Uh, there's always things that they, they can't necessarily predict, but that is their, their uh, estimate with a high level of confidence on when we might be able to deliver this project for Canada. Uh, Bill Curry from The Globe. Just wanted to be a bit more clear on what you're saying when you say the reports are inaccurate. 
I think you're referencing the story describing as an aid package in the event that the tech mine decision is, uh, is rejected by cabinet, that an aid package would include things like the fiscal stabilization benefits, which you have just mentioned you are working on, and uh, abandoned oil well support perhaps. So some of those things you are on the record saying you are actually working on. So which part is inaccurate so we can be clear on that? Well, well, first of all, we're working on how we can create opportunity in parts of the country that, uh, that have uh, the need for increased job opportunities. So that is the way I would characterize it. We're thinking about how we can create advantage through uh, investments across the country. The, um, the uh, issues around uh, tech frontier are separate and distinct. That's going through a process that's going uh, to the cabinet. Uh, it's unrelated to the work that I'm doing uh, on thinking about how we can make sure that Alberta continues to have a robust economy. And uh, that's important for Alberta. It's also important for the rest of the country. And we want to ensure that that, uh, that is an outcome from uh, some of the discussions we're having now. And when you said uh, stabilization fund, it's not January, it's going to be spring. Can we assume spring means it'll be a budget announcement of some sort? What I think you can assume is that uh, we are looking at this right now. We said to the, the provinces that this, this program, the fiscal stabilization program, hadn't been looked at for more than 20 years. It was absolutely appropriate that we consider whether it's having its desired uh, outcome, which is stabilizing the fiscal challenges uh, in the provinces if they go through uh, significant financial uh, changes as a result of uh, their economy. So uh, we're doing that work. We, uh, we will be coming forward as it's, uh, as it's prepared. And uh, I don't have any more detailed timeline at this stage, but, um, but I have made commitments that I intend on keeping. Bonjour, Monsieur le ministre, Hélène Busetti du journal Le Devoir. J'aimerais revenir sur l'explication de l'augmentation des coûts. Vous dites que ce n'est pas le même projet, mais depuis l'été 2018, ça n'a pas changé radicalement. On parle d'une augmentation de 70 Bon, 500 millions pour les Autochtones, ça n'explique pas le 5 milliards. Qu'est-ce que vous dites aux gens qui ont l'impression que vous avez peut-être à l'origine sous-estimé le coût de l'agrandissement pour le rendre plus acceptable et maintenant vous nous placez devant le fait accompli? Merci. Euh, au début, nous avons fait une due diligence. C'est très important quand on considère une, une, une achète d'une entreprise. Euh, avec le, le due diligence, on a, on a, on a vu quelques euh, possibilités. Et en les possibilités, une possibilité était le prix qu'on a maintenant. De cette façon, on a décidé que c'était un projet qui était viable au niveau économique. En plus, maintenant, la compagnie nous a dit que Uh, c'est un bon projet. C'est un projet qui est viable au niveau économique et ça, c'est très important. Finalement, je peux voir qu'avec uh, uh, le revenu qui va être avec le projet après, uh, après c'est fini, on va avoir 1,5 milliard de dollars uh, en plus. Uh, et de cette façon, je sais que ça, c'est possible de, de considérer une autre une autre uh, approche avec un uh, acheteur uh, dans le secteur privé. Ça, c'est important. Les changements. Les changements sont, sont importants. On a eu un délai à cause de uh, le corps d'appel, c'est clair. On a eu une augmentation de, uh, de les coûts uh, pour, uh, pour labor. Ça, c'était quelque chose de très important. On a eu une augmentation dans le, uh, les... Uh, les, euh, la situation avec les Autochtones, ça, c'était une autre chose importante. Donc, il y a plusieurs choses euh, qui, euh, qui ont donné le, la situation maintenant. Et important, c'est un projet très différent, avec les sauvegardes environnementales très différentes. Euh, et ça, c'est important pour notre environnement. Et, euh, et bien sûr, euh, avec une, comme une, une journée comme aujourd'hui, où euh, on avoue dans les journaux, ce matin, un problème avec un train en Saskatchewan, on peut voir que c'est nécessaire d'avoir une approche euh, sécuritaire pour la transportation de, de nos ressources euh, à travers notre pays. Et vous avez mentionné les revenus, 1,5 milliard de dollars une fois que c'est complété. Encore une fois, ça nous apparaît un peu optimiste si on regarde les revenus du pipeline existant. On parle d'environ 150 millions par année. Vous, vous nous promettez dix fois plus de revenus avec un pipeline qui fait juste tripler la capacité. Comment est-ce qu'on réconcilie tout ça? 
on a déjà des accords avec, euh, avec les, les compagnies pour 80 de la de le, le capacité de l'oléoduc. Donc, euh, ce n'est pas, une, euh, c est, c est pas une, une question, c'est vraiment les contrats. Donc, nous savons qu'on va avoir, mais euh, en plus, je crois que ça va être plus que 1,5 milliard, mais on ne peut pas dire maintenant ça va être plus, mais ça, c'est... Ça, c'est euh, euh, très clair euh, à notre avis. Uh, Kelsey Johnson, Reuters. Um, is the government considering waiting until the pipeline is fully operational to sell it? We haven't concluded on the appropriate time to sell the pipeline back to the private sector. Uh, what we are seeking to ensure is that we uh, take the risk out of the project so that we uh, reap the appropriate return for Canadians. We also want to make sure that we have a robust consultation with Indigenous peoples so that they can be part of the eventual uh, next step in the project from, a, uh, from either an ownership standpoint or some sort of a return of, of, uh, of value. So those things need to go on at the same time. And uh, you know, when we get to a conclusion, we will certainly let people know, but it will make sure that we consider one of our, our key priorities, which is that this project creates value, not only for Indigenous peoples along the route, not only for the broader Indigenous peoples that are engaged, but for all Canadians. And that, that means we need to de-risk the project first. So as, as a follow-up to that, what action is the government currently taking, undertaking to sell it? What, what, have you, what processes do you have in place at the moment around the potential sale? The, uh, there are no processes going on in terms of a, an active sale process, but there are, we had a, a first step in July and August 2019, a process of consultations with Indigenous peoples. We put out a report in December, what we heard, uh, so that we could talk about the, uh, the project from that uh, perspective, what, what, uh, what would be potential, and uh, we're looking at next steps uh, right now in terms of how we can continue in that process. Thank you. Bonjour, M. Morneau, Christian Noël de Radio-Canada. Quand j'achète quelque chose, puis on me dit que ça va coûter plus cher après l'avoir acheté, habituellement, je ne suis pas content. Mais vous, vous avez quasiment l'air content que ça vous coûte plus cher. Êtes-vous content que ça vous coûte plus cher? Pour quelle raison? Comme, euh, comme vous, euh, je suis euh, certainement intéressant dans l'avenir dans quand je fais une, une achète. On a fait une achète à 5,4 milliards de dollars, 5,1 après euh, les, euh, les impôts. Et finalement, on a, on, on a, on a une situation où, où on sait maintenant comment et quand et euh, combien ça va être pour la euh, continuation de le projet. Donc, c'était entre nos, nos estimés. Uh, donc, uh, ça continue d'être un projet viable, et ça c'est très important, ça continue d'être quelque chose qui va donner des avantages au Canada, aux Canadiens et Canadiennes, et on doit considérer uh, ce qu'on a eu. On a eu une situation où une compagnie de Houston a décidé de ne de, de pas continuer le projet, Et c'était très important pour nous de considérer comment nous pouvons assurer que nos ressources peuvent avoir une, une, une prix équitable. Ça va être, euh, ça va, on va avoir une, une, une très bonne position pour notre économie avec, euh, avec un prix euh, euh, approprié pour nos ressources. Et ça va, être, ça, ça, ça va donner une, une bonne situation pour l'économie d'Alberta et pour les gens qui habitent en Alberta qui vont avoir plus de travail euh, aussi. Donc, à mon avis, c'est une bonne situation, mais on a encore des choses à faire. Et quand ça me coûte plus cher, habituellement, j'aime ça savoir qu'est-ce qui me coûte plus cher. Là, vous avez fait une liste, mais on ne sait pas exactement qu'est-ce qui fait que ça a vraiment augmenté de 5 milliards de dollars. Je ne peux pas croire que le fait qu'on a des meilleures sauvegardes environnementales, les consultations avec les, euh, les Autochtones et le ralentissement à cause du processus judiciaire coûte 5 milliards de dollars. Êtes-vous capable de nous faire la liste? Qu'est-ce qui coûte quoi? dans ce 5 milliards de dollars-là? Mais ce n'est pas une bonne question. Est-ce est, est qu'on peut dire « pomme et « orange » en français? Donc, le projet est différent. Ça veut dire euh, la chose très importante. C'est un projet différent dans une, une, une situation différente avec les, euh, les sauvegardes environnementales qui sont différentes 
avec une participation des Autochtones différents. Donc, donc euh, à mon avis, nous sommes dans une bonne position et euh, on, on va avoir les, les avantages euh, dans l'avenir. Uh, Alex Ballingall, Toronto Star. Um, can you give us a breakdown of the proportion of this uh, $12.6 billion construction cost that will be like directly financed by the Canadian government, by taxpayers, versus like the cash flow of the corporation? Like what is the mix of, of what the taxpayers directly paying to build this thing? So um, the, uh, the project uh, has been estimated at, a, at a, uh, a total cost of between 12.6 and 13.2 billion dollars. And that breaks down into work that has already been done of about 2.5 billion dollars, about 8.4 billion dollars more work to be done, and financing costs of about 1.7 billion dollars. So that's the breakdown of the costs. Uh, we're in a situation where we know that had we not taken on this project when you know the company from Houston went back to Houston, uh, we wouldn't be able to get a fair price for our resources. So this is not only going to deliver strong economic benefits for Canada, it's going to deliver jobs for people in Alberta, and it's going to ensure that uh, that going forward that we have a, a way to get our resources to market, and uh, that we think is is critically important. And maybe just. Uh asking a dumb question, but uh, the company itself, though, presumably, it's, oil is flowing through the existing pipeline and it's making money. I, I assume they're putting s their revenues towards some of this construction. Like, how much is the government actually footing to build this of that estimated total cost? Well, there's the company which we purchased, which has, as you say, an existing pipeline, and the project that is being built. So that is the investment project. Uh, the, um, that project is being funded uh, through the company. They obviously present us with the estimates and we uh, go through the process to make sure that funding is available. So they are, they are two separate things and um, uh, we are uh, confident that the project is economically viable based on the fact that the, uh, the pipeline has already uh, contracted 80% of the capacity to the uh, companies that uh, that want to use that capacity. So you need to look at them in two separate buckets. Quickly, uh, Mac. Hi, Minister. Mackenzie Gray from CTV News. Um, you've made it very clear today that the government is not willing to hold onto this pipeline for an extended period of time, that you're going to sell it. As the costs continue to mount on this, would you be willing to sell the pipeline at a loss to make sure that the government does not own this long term? Well, we've been pretty clear that we want to ensure that this project is run on a commercial basis, that it is run for the benefits of Canadians, that it enables us to deal with the uh, Indigenous people that are along the line and, and more broadly help us in Indigenous reconciliation. Uh, I have every reason to be confident in all of those conditions right now. The, uh, the report that came out today tells us this project is, is absolutely commercially viable, that uh, based on the project estimate, which is within the range of the estimates that we looked at when we purchased the company, that we have the capacity to move this out uh, into the private sector and uh, create an advantage for Canadians. So that's what we intend on doing. I want to last question, switch topics to the coronavirus. Today, the U.S. Federal Reserve said that uh, the coronavirus presents a new risk to the U.S. economy. China is shutting down many major cities. Tourists are not leaving China like they used to to other countries. How concerned are you on the impact on the global economy and on the Canadian economy? Well, we're watching this very carefully. Uh, we, uh, there are very real concerns around the economic impacts of the coronavirus, especially in China, obviously, but it ha presents uh, challenges around uh, people's ability to ship goods around the world and presents issues like, for example, in sectors like tourism uh, or in our oil sector. So there are, there are real issues. We've seen uh, estimates, but those estimates are built off how long this issue will continue. So uh, right now we are we're doing our best to uh, ensure that we are actively engaged in the containment of the virus and uh, that will be our ongoing priority. We'll uh, be talking with people around the world to get a better estimate of the economic impacts, uh, but those are very dependent on how long it goes on. What are the estimates that you've seen so far? What do they say? We have to go. The, uh, the estimates vary ride widely. So if you look, for example, at, uh, at U.S. banking 
uh, estimates in terms of the impact on China. They range from 1.2 percent in the first quarter to 6.4 percent, and that's downturns in the economy. So those are very wide-ranging estimates. So they're very susceptible to how long this outbreak lasts. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm really not in a position to, uh, to give you any more details. What I can say is in Canada, we have a very strong economy. We're in a position where we have a very strong balance sheet. So we are resilient in dealing with this sort of challenge. But it reinforces the need for us to always to be fiscally prudent so that we have the capacity to deal with challenges that, uh, that we, might not, we might not see. And uh, that is what we intend on doing. This okay, is merci beaucoup. Do you know what the total revenues are, sir? Your, your commercial viability, you must know what the total revenues are. What are the total revenues? 